I'm very impressed uh, throughout the whole process uh, how it's being handled. Um, I, I don't think any of you guys have any idea how long we've been in, in contact and it's just being, being handled very well. I think uh, these people are very thorough and uh, they're going to have a tough decision to make and I think uh, they're going to make the right one because um, you know, they, they do things right. Hey Manny, how do you think that your time in Washington prepared you for the, for the job here? It's a very similar situation, young rebuilding team. Well, it's a step that uh, most of us have to take. I think, uh, uh, let's be realistic, uh, everybody in this town and probably every town in America will want um, a top-notch guy, a Joe Torre, a Tony La Russa, one of those guys to walk in and, and manage your club. But, you know, reality is uh, those guys don't go toward those jobs. I think uh, every one of them already paid their dues, and, you know, those type of jobs go to guys like me at the beginning. I needed to get my foot in, my foot in the door. And I was in no position to, uh, you know, turn down a job like that. I, I felt it was important for me to, to uh, start my managerial career, and I, I took advantage of it. I had absolutely no regrets, and uh, I knew what I was getting into. I knew that rebuilding is tough, it's, it's, it's grueling, and that uh, you're going to suffer in your W's and L's side of it. And a lot of people, uh, you know, we, they're on the right to judge you over on that, but... Um, I'm, I'm thankful that the, the baseball people really look at more the W's and L's when, when you're going through a rebuilding process, and, uh, and that's why I'm here today. So far, what have you seen from that rebuilding process to what's going on here? How much of a difference is it? Well, it's, uh, this is far away advanced. I mean, we, uh, the Indians have a lot more pieces already in, in place. I mean, while we were in D.C., we were trying to identify uh, the, the, the core guys, uh, you know, to continue build, uh, rebuilding the franchise. Here you have almost pretty much a whole lineup already in place of, of very exciting young players. And, uh, and now it's just moving forward and getting a little bit of support and cast and, and be ready to bring some exciting times uh, to, uh, to Cleveland. When fans, look, fans here have no clue as what kind of manager you are, what kind of team you want. When they see you manage and they see your team, what do you want them to say? Uh, I'm a common sense type of manager. That's how I call myself. And uh, um, basically, I'm a guy with, uh, that brings a lot of positive energy and, uh, and communication skills. And, uh, you know, uh, there's different way to do things in the game. And I'm not going to open my book uh, right now. But, you know, there ain't, there ain't that many genius in, in this game, guys. I mean, sometimes... Uh, for sure, all of you guys, or maybe 35,000 other people, understand uh, no one abundance is in order. And, um, you know, we're just going to try to help these guys execute and become uh, fundamentally sound and, and, and just explode all that athletic ability that this team has. And usually at the end of the day, something separates one candidate from all the other candidates. Is there anything that you bring to the table that you've been trying to impress on the Indians that might? separate you from anybody uh, or anybody else right now? Well, I just try to be myself. Uh, this thing is being handled so well that I don't even know who am I going against. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to be, my, be myself and show people, you know, what I, uh, what I bring to the table, that I already paid my dues with the rebuilding process. I think uh, the baseball people uh, knows what we went through. Our character was tested for um, two and a half years, and we didn't break down. So. Uh, we are ready to move on and, you know, get over here, grab this talent, and take them to the next level. And I know the, uh, the Astros are close to your heart. What would you do if both teams offered you the job? <laughs> close to my heart. Uh, I think, uh, you know, th this is uh, uh, my job, and it's a business, too, and uh, all of us in life uh, have to be able to separate our heart and, and our head when, when time comes. But... Now, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be uh, so blessed that both teams uh, are going to choose me and, and offer me this job, but I am thrilled that I'm being, being part of, uh, of both process and, and, and get this far. Annie, are there certain type of coaches you like that would be part of your staff if you get the job? Uh, are there a group of guys that you know that you'd call right away, or are there other guys that maybe you'd look at uh, in putting together a coaching staff? Yeah, we're trying to look for guys that have a, a personality and good social skills, guys that, you know, can, can relate to the players and, and, and have a little bit better balance than the coaching staff. We're trying to 
uh, zero in on, on, on outfield instructor, infield instructor, you know, a catching instructor that we can cover all the areas. Uh, here, I don't know if we're, uh, if the best idea will be to bring so many guys from the outside. That's my belief. Uh, even when I, I would like to bring some of my, the people that I trust because this organization has been so solid and so stable for so many years that uh, the people who have been here uh, with these kids know them inside out and I think, uh, you know, they, they, they bring a lot to the table. Manny, what you if you were to become manager, you suddenly inherit a pitching staff with an ERA over five, and how would you say that uh, you could handle a pitching staff? How can you handle you know basically you in pitching? How would you describe how you handle it, and and what can you do about that? Well, we have a pretty good idea of of how to do it uh, over there. We. Um uh, we, we were working with a lot of young kids, and, uh, and it's a different scenario. Uh, a lot of those young kids, we had to uh, take them out of the game sometimes uh, to get them just on a positive note. It's a different scenario here. We do have guys that have been in the big leagues for a few years, and it's, it's just uh, totally different. Uh, the game in the American League is different than in the National League, too, where you know I don't have to worry about the pitcher hitting here or pinch hitting or, double, or doing double switch. So... You know, uh, hopefully here, you know, Fausto can bounce back, and uh, and and then we have Jake back uh, next year for spring training, and you know that that's going to be a big part of the bottle. Manny, what ball do you prefer, American League baseball with the DH or National League with the pitcher hitting? Um, if I say National League, then I'm not going to get higher here. <laughs> I, I, uh, I have never. Um, um, thought that the guys that manage in the American leagues are not able to manage in the National League. I think everyone is capable of managing in both leagues. That's what they're managing there. I just think that uh, there's more strategy, obviously, in the National League because as soon as the seventh uh, hitter rolls on, you know, there's strategy, uh, strategy there, whether you're going to walk a guy, whether you're going to uh, bun him, knowing that they're going to walk the eighth hitter and pitch to the, pitch the pitcher. And also, the fact that a lot of times in the fifth and sixth inning, it's, uh, it's decision time, whether you're going to let your pitcher hit if the game is very close or you're going to pinch it. Or, you know, the, um, sometimes the pitch count doesn't even ma matter. You, you do have to win the ball game regardless whether the guys had 79 pitches or 82. So I think here um, uh, the managing, it's, uh, it's more about um, the pitching staff handling it basically because you don't have to worry about any of those decisions, and it gives you more time to, to actually coach on the bench because you don't have to, you know, drive yourself crazy just, just thinking about the very next move that you might have to make in the next inning. Manny, having done this for a couple of years now, uh, you, you, I'm sure you, things that you did that maybe worked or didn't work, uh, your first time as manager, what would you do differently that you didn't do your first time around? Well, I, um, it's a very different scenario. Uh, let me put it this way, because uh, uh, over there, uh, there weren't that many pieces in place. And, uh, and, and here, it's just about just uh, bringing the right attitude right off the bat and convincing these guys, making them believe that uh, with, any, with any little improvement in our starting rotation and bullpen that we're ready to, uh, to win here, because this, this division is... Uh, probably the most balanced one in baseball. I mean, this is a division where every year everybody comes in with, uh, with hopes that, that we can win it. It's not like the, the American League East or the, or the National League East when you have two or three uh, top payroll uh, ball clubs. But here, you know, everybody, spring training rolls around and, 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 and everybody has hopes to win it. So I think it's wide open every year, and that's what makes it uh, more interesting. What's the most important thing? I think it's uh, the, the communication part of it. I think, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, the X and O's, um, there are not that many geniuses in the game. And uh, this is a job where it, handling people, working with people is the key, especially because uh, this is a job where the employees sometimes make 50,000 times more than the boss. So uh, handling them uh, the right way is, uh, is the key.